Here's an example of optimization, and we're going to go back to one of the farmer type problems because they are so common and they give us a chance to do so many different things with these problems. One thing that is different about this one, if you go through and read it, the ones that we did in class, we talk about maximizing the area. This one is going to be a minimizing the perimeter, so minimizing the amount of fence used. So the first thing I want to do is I want to have a picture so I can visualize what's going on. I am taking a rectangular region of land. And I am splitting it up so that it is divided into two equal parts. So it's going to look like this, some, something like that with my, with my fencing. I'm going to give labels to what I have. So I'm going to call these pieces Y. And then I'm going to call these pieces X. You could use different letters. You could use L and W, whatever is comfortable for you. I want to look at my primary and my secondary equation. My primary equation is the one that I'm trying to optimize. So in this case, I'm optimizing the amount of fence, the perimeter of fence. So I'll just say P for perimeter. You could say F for fence. We have two X pieces and three Y pieces. So here is my primary equation. My secondary equation is what I know about. And what I know about is how big the land is as far as its area, this 384 square meters. So 384 equals your area, which is x times y. I want to get either x or y by itself. It does not matter which one. They both are easy to solve for. So I'm just going to divide by y. So 384 over y equals x. I'm going to take this value and put it up into the equation where you see an x. So my primary equation now is 2 times 384 over y plus 3y. Or in other words, take 384 times 2, you get 768 over y plus 3y. Once you get to the point where your primary equation has been simplified, meaning you've done any distributing, squaring, combining like terms, and it's all in one variable, you're ready to derive it. So the derivative of p, you want to think of this one as like a y to the negative 1. You get negative 768 over y squared plus 3. And we want to know when that equals 0. We're not going to consider 0 as a critical value, because 0 will give me no amount of fencing. We're going to add the negative 1 to the other side. So I get 768 over y squared equals 3. Cross multiply, I get 3y squared equals 768. Divide by 3, take the square root. You end up getting y to be 16. Keep in mind, I don't want the negative 1 because I am dealing with the dimension. It can't be negative. I want to prove that that actually is a minimum. So I'm going to take my second derivative do my second derivative test. My second derivative, when I derive that, I'll have a negative times a negative. So I'm going to get positive 1536 over y cubed. When I put 16 in, I get a positive, which tells me that it is a minimum. So a real quick test just to make sure that we're on the right track and we have the right type of extrema. Finally, I need to figure out the the other variable, I know what x is, I need to know what y is. So if I go up here, actually I can go where, to where I circled, I take 384 and divide it by the 16. That will give me 24. So that means my fence should be a dimension of 16 meters by 24 meters. Or you could come to your picture and label all your x's and y's that this is 24, and this is 24, and this is 16, 16, 16. Other questions that could be asked, it could ask the total amount of fence that you'll need to, to use in order to have that minimum amount. That would be adding up all your x's and your y's. So 16, 16, and 16, adding those up. 24 and 24, adding those up to get a total amount of fence used that is a minimum. Um, other than that, that's really everything that we've talked about. You can see all the different types. Gives you a nice comparison with the ones we did in class where you were trying to maximize area.